Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I am making layered gel prints in shades of green. I decided to feature green because of St. Patrick's Day. You know, I'm rolling around in this world with the last name of St. Hilaire, but I am actually 80 something, almost 90% English and Irish. So for my grandmother, Mildred Veronica Donnellan, we are using green. And as if layers of green paint were not exciting enough, I'm going to bring in our favorite Stabilo Woodies. So now that I've piqued your interest, if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome back to the studio. So today I'm going to teach you how to make this wonderful, complex, layered, green, leafy print using a mask and some wonderful mark making material to add some texture and line with Stabilo Woodies. So the mask is my design from Joggles for Joggles and this is called Ferns. I am also using a 9 by 11 gel plate that is a little worse for wear. You're going to see that I've been playing around with the green paint so there's some of that on there and on the back side there's Posca pens from my last tutorial video. I want to rest ass assure you that even though the plate is dirty, it works just fine. Even though the Poscas have stained the plate and the green paint is on the plate, it works just fine. So don't worry if it's not as pristine and perfect as it was the day you took it out of the package because it'll probably never be that way again. All right, so I am going to pull the first layer of this print with the green gold. So that means I want to make sure that my color choices in Stabilo Woodies are going to contrast with green gold. So the one in this mix that I have that is probably not going to contrast very well is this one. This color, the lime green, will get absorbed by the green gold paint. And what do I mean by that? It's not really going to show up. If we use a lot of blue and orange and uh, colors that are different from green, they're also going to be affected by the green layer that we put over them. So you need to keep that in mind as well. Color combinations are important, but I, if you want to follow along, I'm going to be using green gold, permanent green, oh sorry, phthalo green yellow shade, and Jenkins green. And then the pencils that I'm using, I don't know if they say the colors on here, but it's a lime green, a cyan green, a medium green, a brown, a light orange, and a gold metallic. I'm not sure about the gold metallic, but we'll give it a try. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is set my plate aside, my messy plate, and bring out the mask so that I can make a texture rubbing. So I'm gonna be working on my nine by 12 rice paper pad sheets. I've got two sheets, or I'm gonna have two sheets out of the pad. This is my all time favorite rice paper. I love it for these kinds of things because it's really durable and sturdy. So it will take the crayon rubbing and the layers and water and all of that uh, without tearing because it's pretty sturdy and thick. It has a smooth side that is facing up in the pad when you tear the sheets out. That is the side we're going to put the texture rubbing on and that is the side we're gonna flip down to face onto the gel plate. That smooth side works the best for gel printing. The back side is rough and that side works the best for gluing down and collage. If that's what you are going to use your gel prints for, that's what I use mine for. Okay, so what we're gonna do is then make a texture rubbing by putting the mask under the rice paper and coming in with the woodies uh, sh with a good tip on them and then angling them to the side. So this is called frottage and you can do it with all kinds of raised texture patterns. So I like working with this leaf mask because we're going to then print the leaf mask on the gel plate to add another layer to the rubbing. So we get double pattern out of it that way. So you're just gonna angle and scribble. And I want to encourage you to overlap the colors. So don't just do the green and then the blue, but actually here's some brown. So bring the colors together. So I'm gonna put some of the brown over the green and I'm gonna bring the brown into the blue. That's what's gonna make it more visually interesting than just 
one color, one color, one color, or one color overall. So the orange looks really nice with the brown. And we're gonna go right over the green. I am gonna put a little bit of this light green with the orange because I like that blend of those colors together. And really, I love doing this with the Stabilo Woodies because they're so soft. I don't have to really scrub hard. I'm really just, you know, playing with them pretty lightly and I'm getting a really good rubbing without having to scrub. And again, it's the overlapping of the colors that really gives it some nice visual interest. So don't be afraid to pull one color over another. And press down a little hard in some areas to get darker and then stay lighter in some areas to get a range of dark and light. But here's my brown and I'm just hitting like the stem center here, darkening that down and just hitting some of that. So you can see that layering the colors is really making this super visually interesting. Okay. So once you've got a good layer of texture. We got a little bit more here and you get it all the way out to the edges of the pattern. And you get it, uh, some darks and some lights and some overlapping color. Once you're happy with that, then we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm happy with this. Okay. And like I said, you can make these in a whole bunch of different colors. You can print them with a whole bunch of different layers of colors, and you could create a whole collection of um, paper with just this one leaf mask or many masks, but I think you're going to like the way this looks. So now we're going to bring back in the gel plate. Just remember that a dirty gel plate is a well-loved gel plate. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a layer of green gold on top of the woodies. So the woodies are water soluble. So I am in effect sealing them in to the rice paper now with this layer of green gold. I tried blending them on the rice paper with water and they don't really move much on the rice paper because the, the rice paper is so highly absorbent, it absorbs the water before the water gets a chance to smear the woodies. So even though I tried my best to smear them, they don't really move. But just to be safe and sure that they don't smudge and smear when we're gluing them into collage, we're going to seal them in with a layer of green gold. So this is acrylic paint on top of the woodies, so they are going to be sealed in and they will not smudge or move. So here we've added that really nice light green gold color. And I chose that light color so that my texture and my pattern would show up. You can play with contrasting with different colors and layering um, with different colors and see what you get. But I was going for green. So here's our first layer, green gold. So now we're going to go a little bit darker out of the three greens that I have. We're going to work from light to dark. So green, gold, and then phthalo green, yellow shade, and then Jenkins green. So now we're going to go with the medium green. I'm going to spread that out on the plate. And then I'm going to print that leaf mask right over the original texture rubbing. So... The idea behind this is that now we're going to put this pattern in the reverse on itself. So let's see. I'm going to try to make sure that it doesn't line up. So that's always tricky. So this would make it line up. So I'm going to flip it like this. 
and we're going to get, it's important to flip it because otherwise if they just line up or they barely line up or they don't line up, um, it just looks a little off. So you want to flip the pattern completely opposite. So I can see that I need more pressure. So you're going to want to use the finger, your fingertips and the heels of the palms of your hand to get the paper to go down in between all the negative spaces around these ferns. So before you dismount the paper, you want to have a look and make sure that you have a good print. So I, I'm going to take it from the top and make sure I have a good impression and also on the bottom and make sure I have a good impression. So here I've got the first layer of the green ferns on top of the green fern texture rubbing. So it's creating some really nice multiplied green fern patterns. I have a ghost print here, which I can most definitely use uh, to create another uh, sheet of collage paper. So I'm just gonna take that rice paper and I'm gonna lift it. And this is gonna be something that I'm gonna save. So there's my ghost print. And again, unaffected by the Posca markers or the dirty plate. And I'm just gonna save this for another print. So now I'm gonna come in with the next layer of darker green. Now you could stop here because this is very recognizable as leaves with the leaf pattern underneath. And you could stop here um, if you wanted it to be that simple. But I want it to be a little more complex. So I'm gonna come now to the Jenkins green. I'm going to put that out. That's darker. And we are going to print the mask again. So we're going to put this down. Let's put it like that. And we are going to make sure we flip it. So this is the way, this is the way that it is. So we're going to flip it and do it like that. That is key because we don't want the patterns to line up. So again, we're making a second print. So now we're gonna have three layers of the leaf pattern, one from the rubbing, the frottage, and two from overlaid mask prints. So again, always lift and check and make sure that you have a good impression before you remove the sheet. I pull it from the top and the bottom and I make sure. And I think we're good here. And here we have the second layer. So we've got this beautiful, complex, double printed mask over the frottage texture rubbing with the Stabilo woodies. I just love that. I love the drawing quality of the woodies. The fact that they don't look like paint, that they do look like drawing material and they contrast to the uh, sharp edge of the mask. So there you have it. And we're going to take the ghost print here again, and we might as well put it over this sheet. So I want to make sure that would be lining up. So I'm going to flip it and pull that ghost print onto the second sheet. So now we've got this beautiful double layer of leaves. And you know what? While we're here, let's just make it into a full fledged print. So I'm going to eliminate the white by going over it with green gold. And I'm using my second brayer so that I don't get any of that dark green that's on the brayer to darken down this green gold. I do love having two brayers. That way I've got no dark in here and I can keep it very light to get rid of the whites. So here is the ghost print. So that is the ghost print that we used to take the paint out of this print. So beautiful. And what I've also been playing with while I've got your ear is doodling on top of, let's get something that's darker, making some lines and some marks on top of this print. Um, I've got a gold one. You gotta go with contrasting colors that stand up. There's the dark green. This soft surface is not helping me any. Here we go, there. So some mark making, 
I love orange with green. Some scribbly mark making. Let's see if we can get the blue. Oh yeah, the woodies are opaque, so they tend to stand up with a little pressure. They stand up over darker colors. So I've added mark making to this now. Some interesting line. Just scribbling. So we got some mark making going on there. Really kind of fun. Gives it a little bit more texture. And then remember, we're gonna seal that in so that it doesn't move when we glue it down for collage. So we're gonna come back with the green gold, really light, and the clean brayer that's just got the green gold in it. And we're gonna take that sheet and print it. To seal the woodies. And now we have two beautiful sheets of green layers, green for St. Patrick's Day. Thank you for being here today and making it all the way to the end. Sometimes that never happens. Um, consider subscribing to my channel. That helps me with my content. And if you are interested in receiving these videos as a blog post in your email inbox on Fridays, so you don't forget, sign up for my newsletter in the upper right hand corner. And I look forward to seeing you back here next week. <laughs>